Well, 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 what do we have here? The Acoustic Audio PSW600, the 15 inch subwoofer. And why do I have this? I don't need any more subwoofers in my home theater at all. I, I don't have the space for it. So what am I doing with this? Well, I'll tell you as I unbox this for you guys. I bought this for $209 on Amazon, and I've seen this for a while. Um, I, the reason why I bought this, when I was about 15, 16 years old, there was a subwoofer from Home Theater Solutions, I think this was the name of them, and they're pretty similar to these guys, and it's like a, a budget subwoofer, it's not a brand that you may have heard of, same thing with Acoustic Audio, you may have not heard of these guys, but I bought this because I remember buying a, a, the Home Theater Solutions subwoofer, and it was advertised as a lot of bang for your buck, but I, I hated it, it was terrible. It had a 15 inch version, 12 inch, 10 inch, and it had a rated power of, I don't know, maybe 300, 400 watts RMS. So it wasn't like crazy powerful, but it wasn't very expensive either. And when I plugged it up, it was the worst thing that I've ever had. It, it wasn't loud, it sounded, it, it played deep notes, of course, but it just it wasn't good at all. So I ended up uh, just returning that. So I decided to buy this because this seems to be something similar to it where it's not a lot of money but you get supposedly a good bang for your buck. The 15 inch subwoofer for under $209. I wonder how that's going to work. Oh, get this out of the way. As you can see here, I'm just kind of manhandling a 15 inch subwoofer so you guys can see it's pretty light for a 15 inch subwoofer and probably pretty small for a 15 inch subwoofer. I'm gonna take the wrapping off of it. There we go. $209 for a 15 inch subwoofer that I bought on Amazon and it got here in the course of two days. And here it is. Actually doesn't have too ugly of an, uh, of an appeal actually. Not too bad. Made of some a little wood, not real wood at all. It's pretty hollow sounding, of course. Not too big, it's taller than it is deep, which is pretty rare for a subwoofer. I'll turn it to its side for you guys there. It's not too deep or too wide, but it's relatively tall. Here's a quick glance. I'll get a little closer up on the amplifier for you guys in a second, but there's the back plate there. Gain knob, crossover, you know, the typical things you're used to. Face switches there. What else there? Auto on, off, or you can have it always on. LFE or line in options, high level input and outputs. Not many subwoofers have that anymore. Not unless you get like maybe the higher end stuff. So let me flip it around to the front again. And I'll give you guys closer shots here in a second of this subwoofer. Let's take the grill off. Let's see. So this is the same driver that I saw in Home Theater Solutions. If you guys are familiar with these two brands, let me know if these are like sister companies or whatever, because they use like the same kind of quality stuff, same kind of drivers like this. That's why I bought this. I want to see if this is even worth $209. Is this even worth your money? I'm kind of looking around here. I don't see a port. I wonder if it's bottom ported. Let's take a look here. Flip it on its back. What do you guys see? There you go. Bottom port there, which I'm not sure if I'm a fan of the bottom port. All of your base is going to be firing into your carpet or your floor. I guess it's okay. I know older clips used to do that. Some folk audios has bottom firing ports. Maybe they'll be okay. We'll see. The feet should get it off the ground enough um, to allow that port to breathe, but we will see. We will have to see. Um, let me go ahead and give you guys some closer shots and give you guys uh, some specs on this 15 inch subwoofer. Alright, so here we go. This is the audio, or acoustic audio subwoofer, particularly the PSW600, the 15 inch subwoofer. And there are a few specs on here. So it has a 600 watt peak power amplifier. That's what they're advertising, the peak power. It's probably a 300 watt RMS subwoofer overall. Um, and it rated, it's frequency response is rated from 22 hertz up to 250 hertz. So we'll see if we can dig down to 22. Says it gets about 99 dB sensitivity, which is a pretty efficient speaker. So it should take that power and turn it into um, usable output. That's good to see. 
Here's your dimensions for this 15 inch subwoofer. It's 14 by six, or excuse me, 14.6 inches in height, 15 or 16.5 inches in width, 18.5 inches in depth. So it's not bigger than a lot of your 12 inch subwoofers that you get out there. So that's interesting to see. Um, but it's it, not too big of a subwoofer. The cone that it has is made of a PVA treated cone according to them. Um, and then of course we'll flip it over on the back and take a look at the amplifier. Let's zoom in on that amplifier for you guys so you can see just a little bit of it there. So you have your gain input, so that's your volume knob there. To the left of it is your phase switch, zero or 180 degrees. Below that is a power indicator with the options of having it on all the time, having it off, or having it on auto to sense the signal. You also have a crossover setting from 40 hertz up to 140 hertz, which is interesting because it said that it could play up to 250 hertz, but you can't even uh, cross it over higher than 140, which is fine. You have an LFE in or two left and right line in options, and down below are your high level inputs and outputs. So if you want to use this sub for two channel, you can use bare wire from your uh, integrated stereo receiver, and you can plug it into the high level inputs and then use the crossover built in on the sub to set your crossover and then feed the output to your speakers. So that's what you can do if you want to do a two channel setup. So if you're not familiar, I actually have um, two subwoofers in my system. One of them is a smaller 10 inch subwoofer from Definitive Technology, the DN10. And then I also have my big boy, my, um, what the hell is that thing called? Slip my mind. Uh, oh god. What is my subwoofer called? Oh, the Rhythmic G25HP. <laughs> the, my big dual 15 inch. This is going to replace um, the rhythmic subwoofer. I'm gonna move that out of the system and put this one in its place and turn off the DN10 and I'm gonna use this one as my main subwoofer, my only subwoofer, and see what it does. Because back when I had the home theater solution sub, I'm telling you, it had no output. You could hear something and it sounded kinda good, but it was so low of volume. I thought maybe the amplifier was bad or something. It was terrible and I never bought anything from them again. But I'm curious, a 15 inch subwoofer rated down to 22 hertz with 300 watts RMS for 209 US dollars. I wonder if this is, you know, maybe under the radar. Maybe we can put this on the map, or maybe it's not good. I don't know. So we're gonna find out. Um, I'm, it's Friday as of this video of me recording this video. It's Friday. I'm gonna put this in my system and kind of break it in as much as I can because I want to put a video up on Sunday of my thoughts, maybe a couple of demos of this subwoofer, and tell you guys if it's worth it because I just looking at it, I'm not sure. But maybe it's worth the 209. So. Leave me a comment down below and you tell me, have you ever heard of Acoustic Audio or Home Theater so, um, Solutions or whatever they're called? Have you heard of any of those companies? If you have, what were your thoughts on their speakers, their subwoofers? Leave me that comment down below and tell me what you think. Give me your guess. Do you think this is going to be good at doing its job or do you think it's going to be terrible? Leave me your guess down below and then come back Sunday so we can find out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button and subscribe if you are not already. We will see you guys in the next video, Sunday's video. Keep this guy out. Peace.